wine, and strong drink. Wine, the fermented juice of grapes. Wine is first mentioned in the Bible when Noah became intoxicated after the flood. Wine was a common commodity in Hebrew life and was regularly included in summaries of agricultural products. In Palestine, grape harvesting occurred in September and was accompanied by grape celebrations. The ripe fruit was gathered in baskets and carried to the wine presses. The grapes were placed in the upper one of two vats that formed a wine press. Then the grapes were trampled or treaded. The treading was done by one or more people according to the size of the vat. These grape treaders encouraged one another with shouts. Sometimes the juice from the grapes was served in an unfermented state, but generally it was bottled after fermentation. If the wine was to be kept for some time, a substance was added to give it body. Consequently, the wine was always strained before it was served. A watchtower or leaf-covered wooden boot was often built on a high place overlooking the vineyard. This boot was occupied by members of the family during the growing season to protect their crop and sometimes by a watchman during the winter. Often a cottage or hut was built in the vineyard. The family lived here during the summer to protect the grapes but abandoned the hut in the winter. Wine was stored in either clay jars or wine skins, which were made by tying up the holes of skins taken from goats. Old wine skins could not be used a second time because the fermentation process would cause the old skins to burst and the wine would be lost. Next, uses of wine. Wine was a significant trade item in Palestine. Solomon offered Hiram 20,000 bats of wine in exchange for timber. Damascus was a market for the wine of Helbon. Fines were sometimes paid with wine. Wine was also used in worship. Libations to false gods were condemned. But the drink offering prescribed by the law of Moses was a libation of wine offered to the Lord. The daily offering. This is found in Exodus chapter 29 verse 40 and Numbers chapter 28 verse 7. The offering of the first fruits is found in Leviticus chapter 23 verse 13. The burnt offering and the free will offering is found in Numbers chapter 15 verse 4 require one-fourth of a hen of wine. The sacrifice of a ram was accompanied by a hen of wine. In the temple organization set up by David, Levites were appointed to supervise these wine offerings. Wine was also used as a common beverage or drink in Palestine a part of the daily fare of the Hebrew people. Wine was a creation of the Lord to cheer the heart. A gift given by him and not by Baal. Wisdom is said to have mixed her wine in furnishing her table. Wine might be drunk with milk. Melchizedek brought wine and bread to Abraham when Abraham returned from battle. Wine was also offered by the old man of Gibeah to the traveling Levite. Jesse sent David with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat as a present when Saul was fighting the Philistines. Abigail bought David two skins of wine. The tribes of Issachar, Zebulon, and Naphtali brought wine to David when David was made king. Ziba bought David wine as he fled from Absalom. Job's children were drinking wine at their brother's house when disaster struck. Wine was also on the list of supplies that
that the Persians furnished to captive Jewish people when they returned to Jerusalem. And whatever they need, wheat, salt, wine, and oil according to the request of the priests who are in Jerusalem. Wine was also used as medicine. It was said to revive the faint and was suitable as a sedative for people in distress. Mixed with a drug, it was used to ease suffering. The Samaritan poured oil and wine on the wounds of the injured traveler. The Apostle Paul charged Timothy, no longer drink only water, but use a little wine for your stomach's sake. Next, Misuses of Wine Misuses of Wine The dangers of drunkenness are abundantly recognized in the Bible. Wine often enslaves the heart. The prophets accuse Israel of being overcome with wine, of drinking wine by the bold fools, and of wanting prophets who spoke of wine. Leaders were interested in drinking and were not concerned about the ruin of the country. The list of those drunken with wine in the Bible begins with Noah and includes Lot, Nabal, and Ammon. Next, wine bibbers. Wine bibbers. Those who drink too much wine. The Bible warns against associating with such persons. Jesus' enemies accuse him of being a wine bibber. Drunkard is the interpretation of the NIV. Unlike John the Baptist, who came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. While the use of wine continued in New Testament times, Paul admonished his readers to be filled with the Holy Spirit rather than with wine. Jesus came eating and drinking. His association with those who ate and drank freely brought the rebuke of the religious leaders who had decided to get rid of him. Our next discussion is strong drink. Strong drink, any beverage that intoxicates. Most Old Testament references to strong drink are to beer the manufacture of which was a thriving industry in ancient times. Strong drink was forbidden to priests when he was affiliating at the altar of sacrifice and to the Nazarite during his vow. It was also prohibited for princes, but it was permitted the Israelites when eating at the sanctuary. Samson's mother Hannah and John the Baptist abstained from taking strong drink. Those who drank excessively were called drunkards. The prophet Isaiah pronounced a woe on those who rose up early in the morning in order to follow strong drink. Israel's priests and prophets were accused of having erred through intoxicating drink. The people seemed to welcome false prophets who encouraged excessive drinking of wine and strong drink. In spite of all the commands against strong drink, it apparently had some medicinal value during Bible times. Along with wine, strong drink was listed as a sedative for the distressed. Our next chapter is Drunkenness. Drunkenness, a drug or deranged condition that results from drinking intoxicating beverages. While intoxicated, Lot fathered sons by his daughters. People thought the apostles were drunk on the day of Pentecost. And drunkenness was apparently a problem in the Corinthian church. Drunkenness is also spoken of figuratively in the Bible to describe a helpless people whose ways have brought them punishment from the Lord. Symbolically, one may also be drunk from the Lord's fury and the wine of fornication. Let's look at alcoholism. 
to be merry and sad with wine. The misuse of fermented beverages has caused untold grief throughout human history. Absalom's strategy of getting Ammon drunk and murdering him was yet another sad tale involving wine. The Bible often reports on the sad effects of alcohol abuse. Ahatherus, the Persian king, commanded Queen Bastes to display herself while he was drunk at a royal feast. When she refused, he had her removed. Elah, the fourth king of Israel, was murdered while drunk. Lot, having survived the fire and brimstone that fell on Sodom, was seduced by his daughters to commit incest while drunk. Nadab and Abhu may have been intoxicated when they offered profane fire unto the Lord. Afterward, the Lord prohibited the priests from drinking on duty. The misuse of anything in God's creation is sin, and the misuse of alcohol causes especially serious problems, socially, morally, and spiritually. Our next chapter is Vinegar. Vinegar, a drink made from wine that had been soured or over fermented. The psalmist complained that his enemies had given him gall for food and vinegar to drink. Vinegar was used by farm families as a relish in which to dip parched grain. In the New Testament, the word vinegar is used only in reference to Jesus' crucifixion. Before Jesus was nailed to the cross, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. After Jesus had hung on the cross for three hours, and shortly before he yielded up his spirit, he was again offered sour wine, which he received. Here are a few scriptures on the effects of wine and strong drink. Proverbs 20 and 1 says, verse 1, Wine is a mocker, and strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Our next passage of scripture is Proverbs chapter 23. We'll read verses 29 through 35. Verse 29 says, Who had woe? Who had sorrow? Who had contentions? Who had babbling? Who had wounds without cause? Who had redness of eyes? Verse 30, They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Verse 31 says, Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth it itself all right. Verse 32, And at the last it bite like a serpent, and stingeth like an adder. Verse 33, Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thy heart shall utter perverse things. Verse 34, Yea, Thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. Verse 35. They have stricken me, thou shalt say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. A final wrap up. God commands his people not to look upon wine when it is red, because fermented wine destroys a person like a snake and poisons him or her like an adder. The effects of alcohol are demonic and destructive. They include red eyes, blurred vision, and a confused mind, perverse desires, and deceitful words. Consuming alcohol opens one's life to drunkenness, woe, sorrow, violence, contention, physical harm, and addiction. Oftentimes, the one who drinks will seek more and more until he or she can no longer control the drinking. 
That is why God says, Look not upon such wine. Believers must not drink or even think about drinking any intoxicating beverage.